Welcome back nerd squad, my name is Ray Destroya and this is Top 10 Nerd. Obviously you enjoyed the last Spider Gwen video. Whether it was the content or the thumbnail that drew you in, there is still a lot to learn about this fairly new character, other than what she looks like with minimal clothing. Although the eye candy doesn't hurt, am I right? What? No, I didn't say that. So let's take a look at the top 10 Spider Gwen surprising facts and this is part 2. Be sure to check out part 1. number 10 spot, she almost did not exist. Creator Jason Latour was hesitant about reviving the Gwen Stacy character because her death in 1973, more than 40 years prior, had such a big canonical impact on the main storyline and in Spider-Man's development. Yet he was drawn to the character nobody was supposed to touch. Surprise he didn't tackle an Uncle Ben return as well, and kind of glad he didn't. Coming in at number 9 is the spider that bit her. Because she is a very close counterpart to Peter Parker's Spider-Man, it is a common misconception that the spider that bit her and gave her powers was also radioactive. However, it turns out the spider is actually a genetically altered extraterrestrial arachnid. The whole thing was orchestrated by this universe's villainous Cindy Moon, who discovered the spider and played around with its DNA before testing the spider on Gwen. Next up at number 8, there's an app for that. Turns out that instead of having the utility belt Peter Parker has previously sported, Spider Gwen's got a more subtle tool for crime fighting, her smartphone. This made everything a lot more portable and apparently a lot more stylish too. But as we all know, as one of the laws of having a smartphone, the more of your life you store on your phone, the more likely you are to lose it. In the number 7 spot, she can travel through different dimensions. Thanks to her second favorite tool, a cute little wristwatch, Spider Gwen has the ability to travel to the multiverse at will after the events of Spider-Verse. Wow, oh mine does it all the time. Well, I don't actually have one, but if I did, this is something that sets her apart from main continuity Spider-Man despite all the similarities she shares with him. Coming in at number 6, we got her pet, a small time criminal called Bodega Bandit, a character modeled after the Hamburglar of McDonald's actually, was stopped by Spider-Gwen as he was robbing a, you guessed it, burger joint. Soon Spider-Gwen learns that the dude's dog has been eaten by a returned lizard. She eventually teams up with Captain America to take down the lizard, and then she gives Bodega Bandit with her own hamster named Pinecone to replace his dog Bandito. Cute little story. Hopefully this one doesn't get eaten. Next up at number 5, she was one of the first spider totems. When the inheritors were going around collecting totems to feed on, Spider Gwen was one of the first totems to join Spider UK's army to combat them. One of the other spider totems she recruited was Peter Parker of Earth 21205, who was actually mourning the loss of that Earth's Gwen Stacy. I mean, you can imagine his surprise at that one. But really, just an ordinary day in the life of a comic book character. Up next in number 4, she saved her Uncle Ben. I mean not throwing any shade or anything. An assassin attacked her Uncle Ben type figure, her father George Stacy, while he was watching her perform with her band, the Mary Janes. She's able to defeat the assassin while costumed, but her father, a policeman, points a gun at her until she reveals her true identity. He may not be of the caliber that Uncle Ben was to Spider-Man, but her dad goes on to be a wise mentor throughout the rest of her superhero career. In the number 3 spot is her spirit guide. Okay, maybe not in those terms, but Spider Gwen's got an interesting little character that carries on her inner monologue for her. None other than good old Spider Ham. This isn't their first time meeting, they were allies during the Spider Verse events, so whenever she needs to make a decision or needs a bit of internal encouragement, she can always rely on that porky little voice inside her head. Do you guys have a character to go with your inner voices? Let's hear about them in the comments! Coming in at number 2, we have How She Learned to Fight. Trained by another superhero as a mentor? Nope. Gifted with the ability right off the bat? Guess again. Turns out Spider Gwen had to learn how to actually fight, and she didn't do it the typical way. Rather, her teacher has been kung fu films. Even superheroes worship Jackie Chan. And according to Cindy Moon, she can't actually really throw a good punch. So maybe she could do with some training. And finally, in the number one spot, we have her music tastes. She is in her own band, so we know Spider Gwen is a musically inclined character. She is pretty picky in her music tastes, however. For one example, she is the proud owner of Taylor Swift on vinyl, so maybe she's not is musically inclined after all, and she is shown to not be a big Eminem fan. Maybe she will change her mind when she realizes she has a shout out in River. So those were the top 10 facts about Spider Gwen part 2. Let me know in the comment section down below who is performing your inner dialogue. My name is Rory Destroya, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another nerdy list.